Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Locke. In this episode of Gaffer and Gear, we're gonna talk about carrying light stands correctly. Now, if you've got a light stand like this, it pretty much doesn't matter how you carry it because it's really lightweight. However, if you have a heavy stand like this one and you carry it incorrectly for days on end, like I'm carrying it now, this light stand is actually heavy enough that it can rip itself apart. Okay, so basically, never carry a light stand by its head and never carry it by one of its locking columns. Okay, so what's the problem with doing that? Well, the problem is how these are assembled, how they're mounted to the pipes. So I'll just show you on this one here. So basically the pipe goes in there and then you've got a little grub screw and that grub screw pushes this against the pipe. That's a clutch plate. Okay, so that sits in here the grub screw pushes that against the pipe and basically what holds this to the pipe or this to the pipe is the pressure from that clutch. Okay, so this works perfectly fine on a light stand because on a light stand, you've got your heavy light or your weight is actually pushing down. Now, if you carry the light stand by the head, what can happen is uh, the weight of the stand underneath can basically rip the pipe away from this clutch plate or in some light stands, actually rip the clutch plate out. So that is basically the problem. So you might be thinking, well, why don't they just, instead of using a clutch plate, why don't they just like screw to the pipe? Well, the problem is if they have a screw going through here, holding this together, that screw on the inside or that nut and bolt on the inside will stop this column from moving up and down. Now, on my rental gear on the, on the top heads, I have started putting, um, drilling holes and putting screws in to try and um, try and keep the head on or keep the bits together. So uh, how often does this problem happen? Uh, like, you know, how often do people rip the heads off the light stands? Well, let's have a look through um, the last 12 months. So I've got one, okay, two, three, four. Okay, so that's happened four times in the last 12 months. So um, why don't I just put these back onto the light stands and fix the light stands. Well, the problem is when people rip their heads off, quite often they lose the clutch plate. So what I'm waiting for is uh, it to happen a few more times, then I'll buy a box of 10 clutch plates and pay for the shipping back to Australia for the clutch plates. Now, here's the next thing. Can you carry it via the pipe here? Well, no, you can't because this pipe is locked into place by this locking column, which is attached to the pipe underneath by one of the clutch plates. Okay, so let's say we're moving the light stand. We're not packing it up, we just wanna move the light from this position to over here. Okay, so the best place to grab it is on the center column below the lock offs. Okay, so the bottom center pipe. Okay, so just grab that and there you go. Nice and simple. So once again, don't grab up here, grab below the, uh, the, the locking column. Okay, so anywhere in that center pipe below the locking column. Okay, so what if we want to trans uh, transport it um, a long distance or we're packing it up and sending it back to the truck? Okay, so um, I've done another video on how to fold up or how to pack up light stands, so watch that video. Okay, so getting into carrying this. So I've seen some people um, or some gaffers will carry it via the center pipe here, okay? So that makes sense, it's not gonna rip off uh, any of the clutch areas. But if anyone bumps into you, um, you can get your fingers caught in between the um, the light stand legs and the center column. So I would not advise that, okay? So how I carry them is via the legs, okay? So quite literally, um, you know, if I'm working on a non-congested non set, I'll just carry it like that, okay? You gotta make sure you're locked, otherwise it unfolds and you look like an idiot. Now, let's say I'm working on a set where I've got um, a, a lot of people I've gotta navigate around, okay? I can't walk around like this, it's too big, it's gonna hit people. So what I do is I carry it this way up, okay? So I carry it upright. Now you can use uh, one hand, depending how strong you are, or two hands, okay? Now here's the thing, don't carry it away from you because that strains your, um, your lower back. Carry it in tight to your body. Now let's say I'm working on a, um, on a high budget uh, TV commercial. The, uh, they might have 50 advertising agency people there, which of course means 49 of them will be standing in the doorway blocking my access and I have to navigate around them. So in that case, let's say I've got a person standing here and I wanna get around them. I'll just make sure that the light stand is on this side of my body as I go past. Now the reason I do that is not to protect them against getting hit via the light stand. 
But the reason I do it is so that none of my lock-offs get snagged in uh, handbags or in, in pockets or in radio comms. All right, now if I'm carrying light stands a long distance, I won't carry it um, in my hands. I find that uh, jerks my shoulders too much, hurts my arm muscles. And also, um, I'm off balance unless I'm carrying something on this side, okay? So my spine's getting uh, tilted out to one side. So what I'll do is I'll carry it over my shoulder. Um, before we get to that point, getting it onto your shoulder in the first place, okay? So make sure you've got the head up and the legs down, okay? And basically, use your legs to help pick it up. So bend your legs. You only need a little bit of a bend, okay? Straighten up your legs. That jerks and helps you to lift, okay? So that gets momentum up over your shoulder like that. Now, the reason you want the legs down and the head up is so when you get to the, the other end of your journey, basically, you can put it down and the light stand is the correct way up, okay? So nothing too complicated there so far. All right, so let's get into the, the two ways that you can carry it on your shoulder. Both ways um, have merits. I really don't like one of the ways. Okay, so we'll go through the way I don't like first. Okay, so one way I've seen uh, people uh, taught is to have two hands holding onto the legs. Okay, so basically you've got three points of contact. So that's the logic of it. I've got point one, point two, and point three is my shoulder, okay? So very little chance of this coming off my shoulder, okay? Now here's what I don't like about this method. If you're, say, walking down a dirt track and you lose your footing, you can't get your hands out to protect you. You can't tumble roll, you can't do anything. Basically, you end up uh, with a light stand embedded in your face, okay? So that's the problem with this. And the other thing I don't like with this method too, is if I start falling forwards, the light stand starts traveling in the direction that I'm falling, okay? So that increases your momentum, and basically, um, you're gonna kiss the light stand before you kiss the ground, so, so pretty ugly. So the way I like to carry it is I like to have the weight offset a little bit backwards, okay? And then I just put my hand over the front and let, it, let the light stand rest up against my hand, okay? So I can just relax my arm, and that holds the stand in place. So I don't have any muscles tensed. This hand's free, so if I need to, I can release. I'm not trapped into the stand. Okay, and um, yeah, basically I find that's a way, way easier way to carry it. It's less strain on my shoulders, less strain on my back, less strain on my arm muscles. Now here's what I really like about this method. Let's say I start to fall over, okay? Now my body momentum's going forwards. The light stand's balanced backwards. So if I let go of the light stand, it's gonna fall behind me. Okay, so the light stand goes that way. My body momentum goes that way and we nicely separate. Okay, I'm Andrew Locke. See you on the next episode of Gaffer and Gear.